We are here at a house that is foreclosed, all too common of a site in America. Due to the Great Recession of 2008, millions of Americans have lost their homes or their houses are currently in foreclosure. The economic spiral has caused many people to panic. The question I have is how did we get here, where are we at, and where are we going? Only time will truly be able to tell. My first question for today is how did we get here economically in the economy? To today, uh, well, we got here, if you want to go back to the year 2000, you have to go back to the year 2000. Uh, at the year 2000, the country was moving along fine. We had a, a balanced budget. After seven or eight years under Clinton, he finally got to the point where the economy grew fast enough where revenues overtook spending, and we had a balanced budget in the year 2000 and for part of 2001. I, I think what really set us off was obviously 9-11, uh, in 2001. Uh, plus, there was a, a small recession in 2001, too. Uh, expansions don't last forever. Expansions peter out after a while. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, a recession, and Bush did give the right stimulus, give some stimulus, but when he tried to pay for 9-11, uh, well, he tried to pay for it, when he, when he paid for 9-11 in the sense he spent more money, he didn't pay for it in terms of raising taxes. And that started the whole thing of deficits getting larger and larger. Then it didn't help in 2008 that the banks were running wild with these mortgages and then we had to bail out the banks. Well, I think the uh, heart of the uh, problem is the housing market. And so the question is what pushed housing prices up so high and caused such a tremendous drop in value which decimated bank balance sheets and investment banks and, and so many homeowners that are underwater now and, and so forth. I think there are basically two major factors that led to the big run-up in housing prices. One was the Federal Reserve overdid it in response to uh, the 2001 recession, and it uh, pumped an awful lot of money into the uh, banking system. Uh, the, the key interest rate, the uh, federal funds rate, was down to 1%, which I never thought I would see. Okay? I'm quite amazed when they had it so low. So that took an awful lot of uh, pumping uh, currency into the banking system to push rates, short-term rates that low. And the other thing was government involvement in trying to uh, fund uh, affordable housing. And banks were under a great deal of pressure thanks to the Community Reinvestment Act, which is still around and I st still think is a potential source of problems in the future. Do you feel that uh, Bernanke's policies are right now and, and what, what else can be done? How uh, Bernanke's policies, he has no policies. That's what it comes down to. He can't do anything about what's going on now. He's tried everything. He's tried lowering interest rates near zero. Uh, he's tried increasing the money supply. The money supply has been going up at double-digit rates for three years. And according to monetarist theory, at least, by the money supply going up, we should have a lot more inflation than we do. But the economy is so weak that not, not, that's not going to work. They did try Operation Twist uh, a couple weeks ago. And Operation Twist is where you make the long-term interest rates uh, less than the short-term interest rates. And I don't think that's going to work either. So Bernanke, I mean, he's trying, but there's nothing left in his toolbox. I don't like the Federal Reserve. If I were running the Federal Reserve, which you know, I'm glad I'm not, but uh, uh, I'd say start running down all those uh, things you bought. You know, let's let's uh, get rid of all the mortgage-backed securities. Let's let the market uh, hit bottom. Uh, let's ease up on regulation and. Uh, open up our energy markets, something that's been uh, blocked in, in recent years, and on that basis I think the economy could do quite well. So I think, that, let me put it this way, the potential for expansion and, and American exceptionalism reasserting itself I think is certainly there. And if there's any roadblock, it's, it's not that we've lost uh, ideas or whatever as an as a economy, it's more I think government has sort of sat on business the last few years and, and delayed any re, uh, recovery. Let's talk about um, an issue that the Tea Party has been heavily pounding on, the, the national debt. Mm -hmm. Under Bill Clinton, depending on how you want to say the numbers, some people say he was in the red, some people say he was in the black. Nevertheless, under the President Bush, he ran the, the, the national debt up, I think it was like something like 10 11 trillion dollars or something along those lines is the deficit 
really as scary as they pointed out to be? And if so, why? And if not, why? Well, I've always thought that large budget deficits either are funded by substantial increases in the money supply with inflation, mm-hmm. looming you know, in, in the background, or financed by uh, simply driving up interest rates and crowding out private borrowing. Now, as of yet, we don't seem to have either one of those two. And I'm not quite sure why. You know, one reason is that the Chinese have been borrowing or, or lending a great deal of money to the federal government and keeping their um, uh, exchange rate uh, pegged uh, quite low relative to the dollar. And in a sense, they're, they're having our inflation, okay, because they're taking an awful lot of our dollars and turning them into their local currency, and the result is inflation in China. So maybe we've exported our inflation to China. Uh, and, of course, interest rates are extremely low, but, uh, you know, the national debt does scare me. I, I, uh, I've always thought that a certain amount of debt is certainly uh, sustainable, mm-hmm. but uh, the burden of government is, is what it spends, and if we don't tax to offset what the government spends, then we have to pay for it some other way. And we hear a lot about future generations but the, the immediate burden of deficit spending is always incurred by the generation that runs up the deficit. I mean, mm-hmm. if the government's share of the economy has gone from about 20% to 25%, and much of that increase is financed by deficit spending, today, this generation, or the people alive today, are the ones who have less private uses of resources because the government has expanded its use of resources. What about the Tea Party and their, their big issue? the deficit. Right. How important is the deficit? Is it as scary as, you know, a lot of people are making it out to be, you know, and and if so, why? No, it's, it's in the short run to get out of this mess, we have to probably stimulate the economy and increase the deficit. Long run, yes, you don't want to be paying off 14, 15, 16 trillion dollars worth of uh, debt. But you but it, to get the economy out of the problem, you can't cut the deficit now. If you cut the deficit now by increasing spending, or decreasing spending, sorry, because they don't want to raise taxes. So by decreasing spending, as I said before, for every 1% you decrease government spending, you're going to lose three quarters of a percent of GDP, which means more people get unemployed. So you can't, that, that approach is not going to work. Uh, in Greece, where they're cutting government spending, in Britain, where they've cut government spending, the, they're still in a, in a bad state as affairs because there's no jobs being created. Now, I would like to transition ourselves to a more private economy. I mean, I agree with some stuff that we need maybe some less regulations, but not a lot. We need more ways to promote investment, no doubt about that. But right now, we have to get people back to work. I think one of the fallacies is that people say we need investment to grow, which we do. But businesses, if you ask any businessman, why aren't you, look at all that cash you have in the bank. Why aren't you putting that money to work for you? Because people aren't buying my products. If you don't buy those other products, why should I invest? So some conservatives say you have to invest first. But I say you have to get consumption up first so businesses have a reason to buy new equipment, mm-hmm. build new plants, etc. The wars. I know that um, I heard from Sun Tzu. He says if you aim for a long-term war, you're going to burn your resources out on the home front. Do you think that the wars have been contributing uh, heavy to the deficit? And well, well, that, they said the boat was, of course, of three point six trillion dollars so far. Okay, if you know Britain after World War One was only a shell of itself because it burnt itself out of res- all their resources. Uh, even though these are quote unquote major wars, they three point six trillion dollars is nothing to the sneeze at. Uh, so the wars have had an effect on the economy has increased the deficit, obviously, the wars, uh, and the fact that we can't, quote unquote, sure of winning the wars, and that we're gonna leave those countries in maybe better shape, but no guarantees what's gonna happen in the future. So, yes, the wars have contributed to the deficit, um, obviously, and that $3.6 trillion could have been not spent, or part of it may have been spent on infrastructure, bridges, tunnels, whatever the case that we desperately need to uh, uh, fix. I don't have a sense of that really. I my sense. I don't think it's been all that significant. We're talking about maybe, I think the figure I saw recently, four hundred billion dollars a year in defense spending, somewhere along those lines. And uh, you know, we we could have had the, the war in Iraq, even the war in Afghanistan, and still not had the 
financial crisis we've had today and not have the huge run up in government spending that we we've had today okay and the you know the military is one of those forms of government spending that I think most people would say is a, a valid role for government now was the Iraq war a mistake I, I tend to maybe agree it was okay it comes to foreign policy I'm I'm not as dogmatic uh, as some of my libertarian colleagues like Ron Paul, he thinks definitely we should get out of all foreign entanglements and cut our losses and whatever else. <laughs> and and I'm, I somewhat agree with what he has to say. At the same time, it's, mm -hmm. there's a lot of dangers out there in the world. And I don't know if we make things <coughs> better by ignoring them. Okay. What do you think about green jobs? And you know, is that, is that the economy of the future? Uh, probably if people will buy into the idea there is global warming, uh, and then we have to do something. Uh, green jobs can work. The, the problem with green jobs is that they're, they're usually green products are more expensive than regular products. Mm -hmm. And because of that, most people buy things at the cheapest. They don't look at the green side or anything. Uh, they look at, this is the cheapest for me, I'll buy that. Not everybody does that, but enough people do it where green jobs will help, but it's not going to be the answer to everything. And in fact, <coughs> As we know, if we're the only ones that do green jobs and the Chinese and the Indians don't do green jobs, uh, it's not going to make a heck of a difference in, in the uh, uh, emissions control or uh, global warming. Mm -hmm. Green jobs. The, the, the word green, I've come to just like green very much. <laughs> it's <laughs> my least favorite color these days. <laughs> but if we uh, have all these government uh, bailouts and, and uh, guaranteed loans and, and funding and so forth with so-called green jobs. And these jobs are uh, windmills and, and solar farms and mass transit that uh, uh, is highly inexpensive and uh, are highly expensive rather uh, and inefficient and raises energy costs for everybody in the economy. I think that puts a whole damper uh, on the economy as opposed to let's say uh, private investments in uh, more natural gas, more oil, areas where the government seems to be a, a blocking expansion. You get more production in these areas, energy supplies increase, uh, uh, prices come down, and it's a boost for the whole economy. Everyone who uses energy, suddenly now they're more profitable and their costs uh, have come down, as opposed to green energy, which increases cost and everybody is less profitable as a result. So it's not just jobs, but jobs doing what? I don't know the exact numbers of, of, of statistics, but I hear that you know if you put investment into infrastructure, it will also help the economy grow and expand. Right. Um, could you explain to me a little bit on, on how and why? Well, uh, if you, if, first of all, infrastructure means electric grid, internet, highways, airports, railroads. As Tom Freeman, who writes for the New York Times and has in a new book, uh, we have to improve our infrastructure. We have to improve our cargo facilities, we have to improve our internet access, we have to make sure we have a reliable electric, uh, the highways have to be fixed, the bridges have to be fixed, because to move goods and services around, you, that's what infrastructure does, it moves information around, it moves goods and services, and if it's broke, or if it's not doing the job it's supposed to be doing, like in other countries, then it's gonna hamper economic growth. So infrastructure is important. Any country that doesn't have good infrastructure, it's not a country that is doing well economically. And uh, ours isn't bad, but we need to improve a lot of the bridges. You know, the bridges, Tapa Z Bridge is ready to fall down. Mm -hmm. There's bridges in Minnesota or other places. The internet is good, but not as good as other countries. Okay? Uh, and, and that's how information is going to be flowing from now on. Let's go with uh, Obama. If he wins for 2012, where do you see the economy at that point? Well, I think it's. Uh, I think we're in for another f four years of sluggish growth. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're moving more towards the uh, European kind of labor market where you have high unemployment and poor growth and, and not much job creation. And, and it's for reasons that governments got involved in labor markets to a much greater extent than was typical in this case, in this country. But we've gotten much more involved in recent years and I think Obama would continue that trend. Plus, there are certain environmental regulations, like more recently, the Obama administration has backed off on ozone regulations. It's backed off. The EPA has on enforcing CO2 uh, 
uh, requirements. Uh, I think if Obama got reelected, those would come back and, and then some. Okay, so uh, I'd become much more pessimistic about the economy if he got reelected. Will America be able to truly recover from this great recession? Only time will truly tell. But me millions of Americans right now dealing with foreclosure or losing their jobs are very anxious and only want Washington to play their part. And frustrations all amounting across everywhere. Can the political system be able to find clarity to find an economic salvation for the years ahead? Only time will truly be able to tell. But I hope that you have found this interesting and educational and maybe some enlightenment for the days ahead. Be strong, take care, and good luck.